What's up, everybody? Good morning. Grand Rise. All that good stuff. This is Shri Bad. And before I get into Yana Yoga, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about an extension of Japa Yoga. Now, my yoga breakdowns don't get a lot of views. Y'all seem to like it when I, I tend to cuss people out more. Um, but that's okay. I'm calm now. So, I talked about Japa Yoga. Japa being repetition. More than likely you're repeating a mantra of some sort. Affirmation. <clears throat> and I also spoke about a Japa Japa where you go from om, the external sound, to mm, the inner sound, which is sound like that. And then a japa japa is feeling it. It's like a vibration, actual vibration in your body. But I wanted to talk about one other step of um, Japa yoga before I go into Yana yoga. One thing I will say right now is that I saw an interview, interview, um, let's just call it what it is. I saw a live <laughs> with Nature Boy and my laws. And Nature Boy said something. And she was like, oh, so you know, you think you God or the Messiah or whatever. And he goes, yes, I am that. In essence, Nature Boy is now practicing Yana Yoga. Okay? Because Yana Yoga is about self-inquiry. And we'll get into that next time we talk. Right now... We need to talk about the importance of Mauna. Because without Mauna, Yana Yoga is garbage. Okay? It's a whole bunch of megalomania. Alright? And remember, we spoke about megalomania. Right? Right. So Mauna means silence. Okay? And you would think that, oh, silence means I have to shut up. Not quite. Yana yoga is, I mean, sorry, mauna, the practice of mauna actually goes deeper. Just like everything else in yoga. And it's ironic that I have to talk to you in order to show you what mauna is about. So, just like with the Om or the mantra, how it goes from external to the middle path or the internal to beyond that, going deeper in, Mauna does the same thing. So, it's one thing to be silent with your mouth. We're not talking about your throat chakra because a lot of people speak and their throat chakras are sleeping. All right? Very little opening there. It's like a little window. And the wheel ain't turning that fast. It's like a subconscious turn, like a heartbeat when you sleep. All right? You have to silence your heart. And then you silence your mind. So it's not like you stop moving, you just sit still. See, I tried to tell y'all that the sitting still or the grace thereof actually comes from Hatha Yoga, which was my first yoga breakdown. It's one thing to keep your mouth shut. People do that all the time. And sometimes you gain patience. However, what would it be if you silenced your emotions? 
And that doesn't mean cut them off like a robot. I mean silence them. Don't let them yell at you. Don't let them talk to you. And what about silencing the mind, silencing your thoughts, keeping your thoughts quiet? It's hard, very hard. It is the spiritual equivalent of something called pratyahara, sense withdrawal, okay? Sense withdrawal is bringing all your senses in. That's a more physical thing, physical and purely mental thing. But the practice of mauna enhances your senses. The practice of mauna increases your sense of sight, your sense of hearing, your sense of feeling, your sense of touch. The practice of mauna, especially when you silence your mind, can allow the person to have all kinds of cities. Cities are powers. You see, people do the sexual aspects of Tantra and they do other aspects of Tantra for the cities, for the quote unquote magic powers. And yes, Ja Rastafari. It is so hard for people to silence their mind. I've been, hmm, I have been in the service of a silent retreat. I was at the place where the silent retreat was held, but I did not participate because the people who participated in the silent retreat needed others to help them or talk for them. People would come up to them and just talk like normal. You'd wear a sign around your neck that says, sorry, I'm practicing Mauna. Not even a silent retreat, I am practicing Mauna. I would be of service to them because they had to communicate certain things with me and they had the opportunity to communicate with certain helpers, with certain volunteers, and not speaking, they would have to write to me. So that there are certain things that I would have to convey. There was a time where I was helping out in a workshop, and the person leading the workshop decided to practice Mauna for three days. How do you lead a workshop when you cannot speak? Isn't technology a wonderful thing? How could this uh, workshop person answer a question they could not speak? That's what I was there for. Luckily. <laughs> The workshop was on meditation. And it was advanced, so she didn't have to say much at all. But you can see how much energy resonated from this workshop facilitator. <coughs> from two days of Mauna. And it got to the point where the facilitator didn't even have to open up their eyes it all in. Anytime someone said something that could be corrected or expounded on, the facilitator would raise their hand. That'll be all they do. Raise their hand. And if it was something that could be answered, but I didn't know the answer, the teacher would look at me 
point to a passage in their notes and I would read it. Mauna is the absence of a lot. And in order to fully meditate, to fully get into that I am, you have to silence the voices inside of you that are not the universe, okay? Your ego is a master manipulator, more masterful than the top-notch narcissist, more masterful than the top-notch sociopath, and way more masterful than any man-made megalomaniac. Believe it. Your ego is your worst enemy that has become your best friend. But we cannot kill this ego. There's no way. Hell, we can't even kill the samskaras that the ego has helped create. We are bound by these samskaras. Even when we get over one, there are like five more roots from that one samskara that have grown and have blossomed into new some scars, new behavioral patterns that the ego has taken for itself. It's hard not to think. It's hard to let go of the final thing that will not allow you to touch the ethers. It is that ego. It's that ego that wants the cities. It wants the power. It wants to be the best. It wants to be perfect. And the last thing you do before you reach perfection is to let it go. See, y'all don't understand that part yet. Because I told y'all, I haven't hit Raja Yoga. Don't worry, we're going to get there. And when we get there, you might be fucked up. <laughs> can't wait. I really can't. But we got to get to Yana Yoga first. And we got to practice Mauna first. You see, when Master Fundi Fee gave us a no screaming, no yelling challenge, that was the first step in me. Practicing Mauna. And I've been practicing it more and more lately. And not because I have nothing to do. My Mauna is me focusing my mind on one thing of importance. And not all these external distractions. Control my mouth. Even if I cannot control ego. Control my emotions, or better yet, restrain them. Even though it's so hard to restrain my ego. And then one day, one day, <coughs> this ego can be silenced. And then when this ego is silenced, and I go into myself, There'll be no distractions. It'll be a true connection to the universe. Not a fake one. Not one veiled through Maya or illusion. No. Something else. How many of you consider yourselves empaths? How many of you have seen auras around people? How many of you have seen spirits around you? How many of you have once in your life ever communicated with the dead? It might not have been a pure experience. If you practice Mona 
you might have that experience again and it might be beautiful Mauna is not a, always about focus unless you're focusing on silence. Then I can hear the other noises I cannot control, nor do I want to. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'll try to stay silent for a little bit. Tell me if you hear them. And I walked away from them. But if I stay silent long enough, every once in a while you can hear the birds. You wouldn't think they're here in the city, but they are. We got bees and butterflies too. You want to know what they sound like? Practice mama. I'll be back. <laughs>